everybody, Jim here. Welcome back for another exciting edition of Show Rebukin, where today we are taking a look at one of Capcom's lesser celebrated arcade fighters. It's called Red Earth, and we have a very special guest to help us with this one today. So everyone, prepare your minds, your bodies, and your souls for Retro Snow. Here comes a new challenger. No mercy. Attack. Hey guys, and welcome back to yet another episode. Today, we're going to take a look at Red Earth, also known as Warzard in Japan, released to us back in 1996 by the good folks at Capcom. Cool little bit of trivia regarding Red Earth, it's actually the very first game developed for Capcom's then-new CPS-3 system, with Street Fighter 3 following suit the next year. It's also one of those games that never saw a proper home release until just recently in 2022, thanks to the release of Capcom Fighting Collection. So what makes Red Earth stand out? Let's dive in and take a look. You may think from looking at it that it's just your standard one versus one fighting game, but that it definitely is not. Oddly enough, Red Earth is primarily meant to be played single player thanks to its quest mode where the player is tasked with taking out a series of humongous bosses throughout the game world, all while gaining experience points, leveling up, getting new moves and weapons, etc. This is cool too since the equipment on your character actually changes its appearance. I always enjoy that, kind of reminds me of Knights of the Round in that way. Bit of a strange design choice for an arcade game, sure, but I can kind of get what they were going for here. This game is simply a showpiece of the CPS3 hardware. You've got a whopping four characters to choose from here, with this game also being the very first appearance of Tessa. The real bummer with this is that there are like eight bosses that you fight, and none of them are playable in the versus mode. Yep, just those initial four. <laughs> The visuals are where Red Earth really struts its stuff. Capcom wanted to go big and they sure as hell did. All the characters and bosses are enormous with lots of frames of animation. The setup is a little weird with the boss's health bar being located at the bottom of the screen. It's huge too, but the boss fights are all only one round anyway, so they go by pretty quick. The AI in the game can be a real pain in the ass. They love to spam the same moves over and over, and some can even take down a good 50% of your health bar in just one shot. It's a quarter muncher, no doubt about it. To further exemplify that, you don't even get a full health bar for each fight. It's solely based on how well you performed in the previous one and how much of a bonus that you got. Red Earth uses your standard Street Fighter style 6 button setup with 3 punches and 3 kicks, all of varying strength. The special moves themselves are performed again, not unlike Street Fighter, using quarter and half circles with combinations of either button. Each character has a few standard special moves that they start with, but several more can be earned as that character levels up, along with attack power, resistances, and more. Unlocking the moves is a really cool feature, made even more awesome thanks to the game's password system, which allows you to pick right back up at whatever level you left at, with all of your unlockables ready to use. Pretty sweet. You'll notice treasure chests on the ground from time to time. These can be broken by swinging at them, and they do contain items like orbs and even some health recovery at times. The orbs themselves work almost just like they do in Pocket Fighter, if you remember that one. When picked up, they sit right below your health bar and can be used by doing a quarter circle back and hitting all three punches. Hey. 
Oh, and let me tell you, these things can be a real game changer in Red Earth, too, especially being that you can cast several of them in a row. Not only do they do a decent amount of damage, but they also help to put a little bit of space between you and your opponent. No mercy. Attack! <laughs> One thing you may not have expected to see here are finishers. If you manage to hit your opponent with a special move to end the fight, you can cut them in half and or chop off limbs among other things. Pretty rare for Capcom. The music is all pretty good as well, but nothing here is as memorable as anything from like Darkstalkers or Street Fighter. Red Earth is cool for, like, a playthrough or two at the most. I can totally see why the game didn't get a home release back in the day. There's just not a whole lot to it. Sure, the graphics are awesome to look at, but imagine paying, like, $50 for this on the Dreamcast. I know I'd feel a little bit ripped off unless they added a host of new content and, of course, made the bosses playable in Versus. The fights are over quickly and the AI is really annoying a lot of the time. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy Red Earth here and there, but it's just okay. Still worth a run through just to check out the character and stage designs. Before we leave, I'd like to say a big thank you to Jim for having me back on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, commenting, and of course subscribing. And until next time, stay classic. Red Earth, a.k.a. Warzard, here in Japan, which, since I mentioned it, is a much cooler title in my opinion and should probably be the name of a power metal band, but I digress. This is a game that I actually never had the opportunity to play until it was released as part of the Capcom Fighting Collection because even for someone who spends a decent amount of time at the arcade, this isn't a title that you'll come across very often, and it is understandable why, because, as Bracey mentioned, this isn't really a competitive fighting game, but feels more like Capcom experimenting with some new hardware and a new concept, a fighting game RPG hybrid, if you will, which is indeed interesting, but lacks the staying power of games like Street Fighter and Darkstalkers. This is the type of game that you play through a couple of times, you have your fun, and then you jump over to something else. Being able to play as the various boss characters would have been great, but the only way to do that is by playing Capcom Fighting Jam, oddly enough, and I'm not terribly inclined to do that. For what it's worth though, the gameplay in Warzard is really fun while it lasts, and the visuals are excellent. There are some cool little easter eggs too, for example, Leo strikes a lot of the same poses as Conan the Barbarian, which gave me a kick. Conan being my favorite barbarian and all. All things considered, Warzard or Red Earth, whichever you prefer, is well worth playing. If you're a Capcom fan, get it on MAME or grab the Capcom Fighting Collection and have yourself a knockout good time. A huge thank you to Bracey for joining me for this review. Seriously, one of my favorite people on YouTube, and I highly recommend visiting his channel if you want to see a lot of retro gaming goodness. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time on Show Review Ken. Awesome!